Welcome to the show. Today we're going to continue looking at my mix process. But first, coffee. No coffee. Last time, we level balanced all the tracks. Remember, this series details my current process. This is not the only way to do things. It is probably different than your process. And that's okay. But let's discuss it in the comments below and try to learn from each other. In step two, we're gonna be taking a look at project organization. It's very important to organize your projects because it saves tons of time during the mix process. I find that if I have my tracks color-coded and marked with icons, then it's a lot easier for me to remember where I'm at and find my place when I'm twiddling knobs and moving sliders up and down. In step two, you'll see me color-coding and putting icons on those tracks. You'll also see me set up buses and aux tracks. I do this to organize my mix session so that when I actually start mixing, it goes a lot smoother. It saves way more time than it costs. So let's get started. The first thing I need to do is save the new project file. I'll call it Mix01. Doing this allows all the pairs in the project to be relative, so I can move things to a backup device later without breaking the links to the file. Now I'll import the prepared multi-tracks into the project. If I do this without creating any blank tracks, then Reaper will create the tracks and name them for me. They'll be named after the file name, which is why your file names are very important in this process. After all the tracks are imported, I'm going to create my buses and color code my track. I turned the master track black because I'm not sure if I'll use it yet. I tend to use a lot of buses when I'm mixing. I did live sound for a number of years, and when you're doing live sound, you live and die by your buses. So any instrument that has more than one mic, as well as every logical grouping of mics, will get a bus. It simplifies a lot of things to have buses around. You can apply plugins to the bus, and they will affect everything on the bus for the processing power of one instance. You can control the volume of everything on the bus with one slider. So I can mix my drum kit with itself and then use the bus volume to put the drums in the mix. I can also use buses for routing to aux track. If I have a double tracked guitar and want to apply palm delay to it, that becomes very difficult to do on the pan track. But I can do it on the bus very easily. I also use the colors of the rainbow to give each of the instruments its own color. This helps a great deal when I'm working in the mixer window and when I'm going back and forth between the mixer and the track list. Also, I put icons on the track. Every piece of visual identification helps speed up the process later on. It's really worth the time investment to properly organize your project at the beginning. Just use the keyboard shortcut Control M to toggle the mixer window. This is a really handy Reaper shortcut to memorize. I learned from Warren Hewitt at Produce Like a Pro. Create auxes for your reverbs. In this case, I'll just use one room reverb since it's a live recording. I normally use two or three and sometimes a couple aux delays as well. Then, create other auxes that send your instruments through on the way to the reverb and set your pre-delay on the aux channel for each instrument. Piping them all through the same reverb puts all the instruments in the same space while controlling the volume, delay, and panning of each instrument individually positions it within that space. This really helps glue everything together and make it sound like a band is playing in a space. But it's really easy to overdo the reverb when you work this way because it all matches so well you can easily put too much on and not realize it. Notice that I set up the entire aux track and then duplicate it. This is just to minimize repetitive work. I'm 
going to add high passing on the base auxiliary that goes to the reverb. When you put reverb on a bass, it tends to muddy the mix because of the buildup in the low end. By high passing the bass at somewhere around 150Hz, I'm stopping this muddying effect while still being able to put the bass in the same space as the rest of the instrument. There are a few tracks I do not want in the mix at first. Namely the master from the level balancing stage, the fake drum room, and the room mic. I'll blend these in later, but I just want to completely drop them out for now. Instead of muting them, I decide to pull their sliders down, so I pop the mixer back up with my keyboard shortcut and pull them down. While I have the mixer open, I'm going to group my folders or buses to the left in the mixer window. I like to separate my buses from my direct channel. It's something I got used to from working on Allen and Heathport. I'll also shrink the track's height in the track list so I can fit more of them on the screen because I'm just obsessed with being able to see everything all at once. Now I'll just save the project and we're ready for step three where we actually start mixing the song. So what do you think of the way I organize my projects? Let's talk about it in the comments below. How do you organize your sessions? Do you use buses? And if so, how? Do you use aux tracks? And if so, how? A thanks, a four, a watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring my bell, baby. <laughs> Till next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and God bless. Have a great time, everybody.